everybody, World War Boy here again, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at my original M1 Grand from February 1945. How's it going everybody, World War Boy here again, and as I said, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at my original World War II M1 Grand from February 1945. Now, first thing I'm going to say, uh, if you're here just to watch me shoot the rifle, then I would skip to about the last three or four minutes of the video, and I'll be shooting the rifle then. But, if you're here to watch the whole thing, then in the first part here, I'm just going to be talking about the rifle. So let's get started with that. Alright, so like I said, let's take a look at the rifle itself. Alright, so if we take a look here, near the rear of the bolt, we can see U.S. Rifle Caliber 30 M1 Springfield Armory. And, at the bottom, a serial number, 3,580,158, which indicates this rifle was made in February 1945. And if we take a look... At the rear of the bolt of the rifle here, we can see our rear sights, which can be adjusted left and right, right there, and up and down, right here. Also, if we take a look at the butt stock of our M1 Grand, you can see our metal butt plate here with its trap door, and the two holes in the butt stock for the M1 Grand cleaning kit. Now let's take a look at the rotating bolt and the trigger assembly. You'll notice here by our trigger guard, you can see this small piece with the hole in the center, and this is our safety. And as I pointed out earlier, uh, our rear sights behind the rotating bolt, and then here, our rotating bolt itself. All right, now, taking a look at the end barrel of our M1 Grand, you'll notice here our front sights, and here, this piece is for attaching our bayonet. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a bayonet for my M1 Grand. I'd like to get one, so that's probably going to be one of my soon and upcoming purchases. Now, what you do to load your rifle is pull the bolt back just like so, and take one of your fully loaded in-block clips, with eight 30 aught 6 rounds, and you're going to feed it into the rifle just like so, pull the bolt back, and push the clip down into the gun. Now, once you keep pressing, it's going to lock into place, and the bolt is going to fly forward and chamber one of the rounds. Now, if you're not careful, whenever you keep pushing the clip down into the gun, the bolt may slide forward, and close on your thumb just like so, which is extremely painful. This is known as the grand thumb. But you can also imagine if the bolt is closing from all the way back here, just like so, that is not going to feel good at all. I personally have only had the M1 grand thumb happen once, and I can tell you it is not a pleasant experience. Yeah, I would most certainly not want my thumb right there when it's closing. Now, whenever you have a full in-block clip loaded and you fire that last round, your in-block clip, along with your last casing, is going to be ejected out of your grand. Of course, when your in-block clip does eject, it creates that iconic M1 grand ping. You can also dry fire your M1 grand with either an in-block clip loaded or not loaded, but I prefer to load one just so that after I dry fire, I can hear that iconic ping. It's like music to my ears. I could listen to it for hours. Let's do some pinging. Take your grand, open the bolt, take your empty in block clip, insert it like so, push down, and don't give yourself the grand thumb.
music to my ears. All right, enough fooling around with the pinging. Let's go shoot this thing. Thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and to you all I wish a happy new year.